the development of electricity was like the rapid development of the automobile, computers, or the internet. Everyone could see that it was useful and amazing, but nobody knew quite how to utilize it or what the standards would be. It could be said that Thomas Edison created the idea of a centrally located power station. The only problem was that the direct current power he was using did not transmit very far. You could only transmit direct current a few thousand yards from an Edison generating station. It's quite obvious to George Westinghouse that direct current was never going to be a national model. Uh, it's just a local model. That meant that in order to power a city, he would need power stations every mile or so that were small and practically in their customers' backyards. These facts did not stop Edison from promoting DC power with the theatrics and flair that he was known for. Edison lived in New York City, was politically connected, and loved to put on a good show. He leveraged his fame, his name, and his face to his advantage in business. Direct current power became popular, and Thomas Edison became a leader in the field. I mean, Edison had the market and built the first power station in New York for transmission lighting. J.P. Morgan actually had the first house that was lit. In contrast, George Westinghouse did not even like to be photographed. Yet the limitations of DC power were very clear to him. He felt that electric power should be generated in one place and be transmitted to users far away. In 1885, George Westinghouse became interested in the inventions of European inventors Galliard and Gibbs, relating to the use of single-phase alternating currents and distribution with transformers. George Westinghouse was the first to recognize that you could use a transformer in a large system. With alternating current, you can transform the voltage up to a high voltage, low current, and uh, send it hundreds and thousands of miles at the high voltage and step it back down to the low voltage where you use it. It was the key to the entire system. He purchased the American rights to their patent and threw himself into the study and design of a new kind of transformer. It was said that he recalled his experiences in the gas industry with the reducing valve that allowed high pressure gas from the well to be transported over a great distance and then delivered at low pressure at the point of use. The transformer was his reducing valve for electricity. That's exactly what he was doing with gas transmission, because voltage is pressure. It's the exact same term in, in electricity as it is in hydraulics and, and gas uh, fluid. He could step up the voltage to transmit it at a faster speed, and then when he got to the houses, he could step it back down again. Those who watched him work were stunned at his capacity to do extraordinary things quickly. Through long evenings, he would work in his private railroad car and in his house, designing, sketching, and dictating. When at home, he often worked on his billiard table. It was said he never had a pencil, but just borrowed one from the nearest man. He never returned any of the pencils, and nobody knows what happened to them. One writer said that his trail through the world was blazed with other men's pencils. <laughs>